Well, hello kids. Hey, welcome back. Today we've got another collection of firsts here at the circus. It's a first for this brand, uh, first for the Boker Plus line. Uh, not just Boker, but Bokers in general. Um, and spoiler alert, uh, this is an automatic. So my first uh, automatic, other than just picking one up at a show, checking it out and saying, no, nah, that's not for me. Um, this was on sale for $40. I'll show you what it is here in a second, but you saw the title so you know what's coming. Let's give you a shot of the deets here on the box. I need to turn on my auxiliary light. There we go. Is that coming in? Hello? Hello? Bump. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, I'm not. Uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the Boker Strike. Uh, this is the um, Desert Warrior Edition. Picked this up from uh, Blade HQ recently. So, by the way, let's go ahead and finish showing you around the rest of the, the box. It's basic box with a desiccant pack, but a really nice little uh, pouch. Comes with it, pockets. Put a couple knives in there, or a knife and a takedown tool, or whatever you want over here, a pry bar, you know, throw it in your pocket so nothing gets scratched up if you like. Um, but still, well built, little pouch. Nice bonus, especially on a $40 knife, in case you missed that part. Let's get that out of the way. But yeah, uh, I will tell you straight up front, I am not an automatic guy so I'm spent a few days with this in my pocket and uh, this is OD olive drab green uh, G10 scales over stainless steel frame stainless steel eh, mid carry clip uh, single direction only no and go tip up, tip down, and first, well, not first flick, first flick on camera for you guys. Whoa, never. There you go. Very, very snappy. Uh, yeah, look at that blade. Nice. I do like the the color scheme. I like the uh, I like the way the billboarding is basically just cut out of the Cerakote on the blade. Um, this side will tell you, yep, it's D2, D2 steel, um, I'm not D2's biggest fan, uh, I feel sharp enough, yeah, it's got a safety, and, uh, it has a bit of a, in fact, right there you can see it, it has sort of a two-stage trigger, for those of you who are into pew-pews as well, uh, it has a two-stage trigger, so if you've got the safety on here, um, and safety is denoted by a red dot, a lot of you will recognize from other recreational equipment. Uh, yeah, you hear that? That is... Ah, it doesn't reset. You have to push the blade down. Now, it does have a bit of uh, detent lash. You can push it down a bit while it's locked. And that does reset the button. So it resets the trigger. Uh, and you, you feel... You can push it down to the end of the first stage, but it won't fire off the back until you press it down again. Now, let's uh, set that unset this oh nope it still had its second stage so weird i don't uh i'm not gonna take this thing apart or anything like that i'll explain why later but uh yeah it's like a button lock i can see the cutout for this lock and uh whatever's going on there but the button lock itself looks 
just like the button lock on the Kaiser Swayback Swags or uh, the Orion Solaris, very similar mechanism in there. I do not see where the I don't see where the spring engages things. Um, I'm sure it's inside the blade, and I'm sure I'm just miss, missing seeing that spring. Oh, I think I see it now. Uh, I think I see where it comes. Okay. So I'm going to guess there's a spring wound up on one side, probably this side, behind the scale, that throws the blade. So... Like I said, it has a two-stage trigger. So you can get down to a certain point. It clicks. And that's where it would stop if your safety was on. You can still put your safety on now. Oh, I think we may... It, oh, safety wasn't all the way on. Let's try that again. Okay, see? You see the blade budge? Just In fact, let's reset that. What's the edge of this blade? Let's see if I can see that. So that's the first stage. You're now basically cock lock, ready to rock. You hit that button again. There is no give. It will go straight out. But will it let me put the safety on? It does. And, oh, that button is rock solid now. There is no play. There is no second stage. But Watch that button. Oh, there it is. First stage of your trigger is back. So, anyway, that's that gives you a little bit of insight maybe as to how things work in there. Uh, turn that on, and yes, it'll lock it open as well. Okay, so your safety works either direction. It'll lock it closed while it's in your pocket. More or less just the initial impressions video. But uh, D2 Steel... I believe uh, made in Taiwan. So would I recommend this knife to somebody? Um, uh, honestly, yeah. I mean, if you're looking for an automatic uh, and you can catch this thing on sale for 40 bucks, um, you could do a lot worse spending $40 than getting something like this. Um, it's a nice size piece of D2. Looks like it's probably over three millimeter. Uh, I'm calling 117. Come on, 117 thousandths of an inch. Millimeters as well. Oh, it is right at three millimeter. Tell you what, as far as scale thickness, we'll go. Uh, 51 hundredths, 512 thousandths, um, not including the button or the lock or the uh, pocket clip. The clip, that little duck bill kind of gets into my hand a little bit. It could be knocked down more flush with the back of this. Maybe. Uh, whoa. Keep your finger in the choil. Uh, yeah, that, that clip isn't exactly uh, what I would consider comfortable. Throw some stats on this thing right quick. So you got a blade that is about three and a quarter inches long and cutting edge is about three and an eighth. Handle length is not quite four and a half inches long, giving you an overall length of seven and three quarters inch, right about there. Uh, we already gave you the handle and the blade thickness with the calipers, so let's give you some comps. Here is the Topps Mini Scandi Folder 4.0, MSF 4.0. One of my early EDC knives. Here is the Revo Berserk. All once again on the backdrop of Brother Forrest's Hank. Breaks things up nicely so you can see the outline of the knives. A little better than on the trees, I hope. Um, Berserk, direct comp. Tops Mini Scandi Folder 4.0, just a hair shorter on each end. Maybe less than an eighth on this end and three sixteenths on this end. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
Here is the Sage 5 from Spyderco. Oh, we're quite a bit shorter in the handle and about a quarter inch on the blade. Let's put it up against my favorite button lock. And we will see. Blade is same, same, and handle we're off probably a little less than a quarter inch. Nice comp though. Uh, what else we got? Well, if we're going to do that, we may as well do the Manix 2 while it's still here. Pivot to pivot, longer in the blade, longer in the handle by hair as well. Um, hmm. How about the Kubi Locusts? Pivot to pivot, longer in the blade, slightly longer in the handle as well. So, Civivi Riffle, pivot to pivot, longer in the blade. Oh, I think they're about the same in the handle. So ever so slightly longer blade on the Riffle. Let's keep things kind of muted colors for the other. I don't want to go with black, but, and I don't have any small knives with coated blades, uh, at least none that I can think of right off the top of my head. So this is what it'd look like in a standard daily EDC for me. Small folder, medium size to large folder, and a small fixed blade. That's basically what I'd be carrying on any given day with that knife. That's what I've got in terms of uh, this Boker Strike Tanto and Desert Warrior Color Edition from Blade HQ. Like I say, for $40, I think you could do a lot worse. Um, I'm just not an automatic fan, guys. Uh, sorry I don't get as enthusiastic about these as uh, something I can sit there and drive you guys nuts with. But this, to me, isn't fidgety. <laughs> Doesn't mean it's not a good tool, though. Uh, this thing feels fairly solid. There is, like I said, there's a little bit of lock lash when it's closed. You get that tiny bit of compression where the blade will go a little bit further in. But uh, overall, I'm slightly impressed with the quality of a $40 knife. Uh, anyway, that's what I got for you today, kids. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope uh, this might help you go out and spend, uh, even if it's not on sale. Uh, is this, what, a $50 knife maybe? I think it would still be worth it, just as a D2 if it wasn't an automatic. But uh, if you're into automatics, and or you want to get into automatics, I think this is the kind of perfect gateway knife for that scenario. So, there you go. Brother Forrest, thank you again for the uh, additional background material. Until I see you again, and I do hope I see you again, stay well, be kind, do good. That's it. This is Grumpy. I'm out.